Hey, I'm Ted. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, we're going to work on installing this WFCO power center, the 8900, and we're going to put it right about here. Okay, I chose this because it was relatively inexpensive, had pretty good reviews. Uh, for those first couple years, you know, we're not going to put in solar yet. It's kind of beyond the budget. Uh, and I think for most of the time, you know, where we live in the summertime, we have access to power. So uh, we just need something that we can plug into shore power and then that can trickle charge the batteries that we use to run the LED lights. We only got a couple 110 volt circuits anyway. So this, I think, is going to be a good budget solution for us in the meantime. So. Um, We'll see how it goes. I'll let you know, uh, uh, you know how, how it works as we put it in. So the first thing, so this is our utility closet. Obviously, I've got all the circuits running into here. And uh, it's got some vents in the back, so we want to make sure that we give it enough room to breathe. And so I'm thinking it's going to go about here somewhere. And that will give us room in the back for the conduit to tie into the knockouts. And uh, also, like I said, it requires two cubic feet of air. I think you can make it work. So I think I'm going to build it out of plywood and then hang it right there. And that should give us enough room to breathe. And also, you know, it's up here in pretty visual access. You know, rather than bending way down there to try to look at it or have it way up high where you can't see. So uh, I'm thinking that's going to be it. So, so let's go build the cabinet. All right, that looks like it, uh, it'll fit pretty good. Uh, I did sort of open sides like this so that I can get lots of airflow through there and keep it cool. Uh, and then I probably should have used all these plywood scraps. I started using this extra pine I had kicking around. I thought, you know, uh, maybe this old Advantech would be better. But um, So it's all glued and screwed, peg jig together. That'll be good. Let's go see if it fits. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can snake all this conduit in the back here, something like that, and then maybe you have to go in the top like that, I guess. I can screw that whole thing to the back of the wall like that. I think that'll be just fine. But before I do that, I'm gonna go put a coat of black paint on it. Like I said, I don't know why, just because electrical stuff seems to always warrant that. So we'll do that. Okay, so we're back today to continue uh, putting in our power control center here. And I did one of those things yesterday where I thought I was done, so I put the cameras away. And I'm really going to carry this in because the paint was uh, pretty much dry. And uh, then I thought, well, I want to see kind of what it looks like up in there. And then I got it up in there, and then I decided to put it in and I'll screw it in. So I uh, didn't film it, but I can kind of show you what I did yesterday. So we just screwed it into the back of the plywood. Uh, with these torque bit screws and then I drilled holes 
at the top. Here I think they're seven eighths to run the conduit through. And I did some at the bottom as well. And I decided to put a vent in here on the side too, just for some extra air flowage and keep it cool. I just cut a rectangle in the side of the closet and then I used uh, some old ceiling material. And I cut a rectangle out and screwed that into the side. So we're all kind of set up. So the next thing to do is knock out some of these knockouts and then fit the conduit so it's the right size, the right length and put the connectors in and run the wires into the body of our power center. Okay, so our unit's gonna slide in there. Just like that. Eventually we'll secure it with screws here. But now, I've got to trim the conduit so it's just the right length to go into those knockouts. I think that's going to be a bit of a pain actually, but you got to leave them long so you make sure you get enough. I've got my Tex tubing cutter. Maybe that's going to help. They make a fancy cutter for these, but I didn't feel like buying a whole separate one. So, let's see how it goes. I think it's going to work. Okay, put in uh, our 110 volt power leads. So now I'm going to take a, a knife and cut that insulation away without slicing the wires inside or our fingers. Take our wire strippers and strip about a quarter inch off of these. Next up, go up into the neutral bus bar. The greens go over here to the grounds, and the blacks will go to the circuit breakers over here. Loosen these lugs. Insert the wire. And tighten them back up. Learn from a screwdriver. To tight enough so it's fairly tight, but without crushing it. I learned from Norman, this French Canadian contractor, electrician, plumber, he did it all. The Vietnam vet had a grip that would break your bones in your hand, but one of the sweetest guys. But he said it. It, yeah, it must be tight. You must get it tight. Using a stranded wire, you really gotta give a little twist out of keep those strands together. Move the grounds down over here. So we've got 20 amp breakers for the receptacles. And there's a screw on the back side of that. Put 
and loosen up that screw. Insert the wire under the little clamp. And again, tight enough so it's tight without crushing the wire. If it's loose, then you get some sparking in there. You don't want that. Then the this little hook, this end, the hook hooks under that little ridge, and then the little plug at the end snaps onto the bus bar like that. Since we don't really use uh, a ton of electricity, again, we don't uh, have AC, we don't really watch TV, you know, we just need to charge a laptop and, you know, charge some cameras and things, phones and things like that. Um, we're going to use a 30 amp service as opposed to a 50 amp service. So uh, 30 amp service uh, calls for 10 gauge wire. So I uh, had some 10 gauge wire in the bus. So I'm going to repurpose that. So I'm going to use the yellow as the ground and that goes right into the, the neutral bus bar. And then the main power lead is going to go into a 30 amp breaker, which is going to be the main breaker for the box. So same process, run the wire into the screw there like that. That goes into the main breaker. All right, we got all the all the wires hooked up. Now we got to run a ground wire through that little hole right there into the ground bus bar right here, and then up into the chassis, which I think I'm going to use in this rib. We got a good a couple good holes right there that's going to attach to the chassis. And it looks like a good spot to ground. Using the eight gauge wire here because that's what it calls for in the directions. Bending it in there is a little bit tricky. All right, 120 volt side done. Move on to the 12 volt side. has been working hard to get that help. The dark money groups are spreading false information about those efforts. Susie Collins has been working across the aisle to secure more personal protective equipment. Okay, so now we're going to run uh, power from the battery up to here, the positive lugs and the negative. And it says run it to uh, a bus bar and run all the negative returns back to that bus bar. But I grounded everything on the chassis, so I'm just going to skip the bus bar and run the negative right back to that same ground that I had before.
I don't really have uh, eight gauge wires, wire strippers, so I'm sort of cheating, which you're not really supposed to do. So I'm just kind of cutting that. But you want to be really careful that not to cut any of the strands. It's a stranded wire, and if you kind of losing the point of using stranded wire if you cut the ones off there. So I'm trying to be really careful and just getting the insulation. And using like the little plier tips to pull that off. That looks all right. Now I'll drop the fuses in. Okay, got a little external tooth lock washer and a regular washer. Hopefully we can get this to sit right in there. Test our 120 volt system. Let's uh, let's hook up an outlet. So, if doing repetitive work like this, uh, really recommend sort of having a tool belt so that you can have everything right at hand. So, uh, I'm gonna need my wire strippers and my crimpers and the utility knife, and then you know I can use this screwdriver, but uh, using the impact driver is so much faster. And then. Now the other thing that's useful is to have a bunch of pigtails, um, which is just short uh, pieces of wire cut from scrap. And uh, I don't. Sometimes I pre-strip uh, the ends, but on some strand of wire I don't, because it just gets sort of banged up. So just kind of keep that stuff all handy. All right, put in this receptacle. I'm gonna first strip the wire of its insulation. You want these tails to be six inches by code. You don't want it much longer than that because too much wire and it's too hard to fit in the box. It's kind of going to be tough anyway. Um, but you want at least six inches so you have a little some some little play in the wire. That way, if something does sort of grab it on the other end, it's not going to yank the connections apart. You're going to strip about a quarter of an inch off all your connections. All right, so I'm using stranded wire, so I have everything in conduit. If you're using solid wire, I know this is a multiple gang box, but you want to make sure that um, your wire is stapled to the stud here at least at least six inches. I'm sorry, at, at most six inches from the box. So that again helps provide that protection. And you get these tabs in conventional boxes like that, and. Uh, don't knock those out. Instead, take your solid wire, push it through the tab, and that provides like a little extra break. So if you, you know, if the wire tries to get pulled on it, it actually helps hold it. So, you know, keep those tabs in. Um, since I'm using conduit, I can just keep it there like that. All my wire is pretty anchored. I've decided to use forked um, shrink wrap crimp connectors. I just think that they're going to be the most secure and sort of the best option for an RV. So twist the stranded wire, get my fork connector in there. And crimp. I love these crimpers. I, uh, you might have seen when I did the console video. I tried to do it with just normal pliers and everything kept falling apart so these tend to really make a pretty solid connection. Now I'm going to heat shrink all the connectors. Alright, pretty solid. Okay so this is a mid-run receptacle in the sense that I've got uh, power coming into this box first to this receptacle then moving over to this one and then it's going to move to another one in the chain. So these receptacles have multiple screws on them so that the power can come in to one side, hit the receptacles, and then go out the other. And so um, if it was an end run, then you just have 
you know, one wire come into one side and one come to the other. You don't have to worry about the other screws. But since this is a mid one, so um, we have black, white, and green. So the black is the lead ones. And the black goes to the brass side. You get a brass and a silver, and then the white goes to the silver. So if you're color oriented, you can think oh, white goes to silver, and then, or if you're alphabet oriented, you can say that black goes to brass B and B. So you can use the screwdriver. I like to use my impact driver because I just think it's a lot faster. White. Black to brass. If you're using solid wire, you make a hook on the end of it, like that. And you want to put the hook on so it's pointing clockwise, so that as you turn the screw, it actually pulls the wire onto the screw, rather than if you had it this way, it would actually tend to pull it off. It would pull the hook off. So I always screw it on clockwise, but I like the power of my fork connectors. Now the green, the ground wires, go and connect to this only one ground screw and it's green. It's hard to get two wires on there, so I'm gonna create a pigtail. I'm gonna put these together on one side and I have cut you know, a bunch of these little pigtails I make from scrap. Um, if I'm using solid wire, a lot of times I pre-strip the ends, but with stranded wire, that gets kind of beat up, so um, I just strip that afterwards. But I'm gonna create a pigtail with a connector and then hook these two together and then run this one out to that ground. So kind of twist those together. And hook the green wire up. It's got a different, got a flat head. I'm going to work to fold these wires in as neatly as you can. The general practice is to put the grounding prong up, and I guess the rationale is that you know if the plug starts to pull out and something metal falls on top of it, it's going to hit this ground uh, connector, which generally doesn't have uh, electricity running through it, so it tends to be a little bit safer. So. All right, so we're pretty much hooked up here. And then I've sort of temporary done some power leads to set this up. Um, so this is my shore power. I haven't drilled the hole through the side of the bus yet. So I just sort of ran my power leads into that. And I have my 30, this is a 30 amp, um, 30 amp shore power supply, but I've got a, just an adapter here to run just a regular uh, 15 amp extension cord and then for the DC power I've just rigged up this battery with the power lead going into there and I ran the ground to basically a chassis ground up there like I did the other side so this should be set up to work so for the moment of truth I guess let's plug it in and test it Getting power there, getting power there, getting power there, okay. Getting power there. Let's test the seat gun we we're just using. Woo, it works. All my, all my light connections are sort of bagged up there waiting for installation tomorrow. Um, but I got this one light here. Maybe we'll rig that up. This is my DC power to my water pump, but maybe we can rig up a light to see if that works. It works! Woohoo! Okay, so it looks like we're up and functioning normally. Uh, that's awesome because I don't know about you guys, but half the time, maybe even more, you start on these projects and there's always significant problems it seems to uh, to be but yeah it seems to go in all right so um, check the the AC outlets as you saw and that's working I uh, check the DC connection that's working if I flip on the charger again I just charged this battery last night so it's pretty uh, pretty full but 
when it's uh, when the charge is on, I'm getting 13.72 volts across the battery, and when it's charging off, I'm getting like 13.2. So clearly, there's a trickle going in there to keep that battery charged. And again, it's just a little car battery they put in there. But so uh, so that's it. That's how I uh, install the power center. I'm excited to get uh, all the lights in once we get the ceiling going on, so I can fully test it and see how it works over time. Um, I guess the next step is to just secure this in and put the cover on. And but we're good to go. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, uh, if you're an electrician and I did something wrong, let me know so I can fix it without burning myself down. And then uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. It'd be the best I can to answer them. Uh, so thanks for watching. Appreciate the support. Thanks for checking in. Hit that subscribe button, like, do all those things you do, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.